Hey guys, my name is Destiny Ray, and welcome to Girl Talk with Des. Um, we are a new um, podcast, a new show, so I do want to make sure that um, you guys all remember to um, firstly tune in. I'm going to move my big head so y'all can see. Comment. Give me a lot of uh, interaction. I want feedback. I want to be able to talk to you. Hey guys, my name is Destiny Ray and welcome to Girl Talk with Des. Um, we are a new show, so I want to make sure that you guys don't forget to comment, to um, react. I want to have some engagement, some conversations with you guys. Um, once we start building a subscriber base and get um, a large enough community, I do want to uh, start going live and have some uh, actual conversation with you guys. Uh, letting me know what you guys think about the topics. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And um, yeah, you know, get those get those comments. I'm gonna move my big old head so y'all can see. Uh, I found my way bar, y'all. And well, it wasn't lost. It was just in a box, box off to the side that I just really didn't care too much about. So I was playing with it last night, and I asked my baby. I was like, "Look, he's here." I mean, my, my waves fell a little bit, so they look a little beached, beachy, you know, tossed a little bit, but she was like, yeah, I was like, you just telling me that. <laughs> You're being nice because you want something. She's the one, so she, she, you know, she's one and a half, so she got the game. She's got the game sold up already. But guys, um, like, share, and subscribe, okay? Um, make sure you get... Um, share with your friends out like I said I want to be able to have interaction with you guys um to get feedback to let me know what you guys think if you guys have some uh, particular topics of interest that you want me to include don't forget to again like share subscribe okay yep put it there oh my god this is hideous <laughs> we're gonna leave that up <laughs> now I'm gonna get to that uh so it was worse earlier so um this is actually I'm gonna take that out actually because this is actually episode three not one um this is the third episode there my background now let me go in and uh change this back for you guys mm -hmm. let me move this out of the way and let's get started so um, on the show, as you guys already know, if you watched the first episode um, and the home intro uh, video, if you haven't, go back and watch it. I'm pretty sure you guys are going to find uh, some nuggets on there, some things that I think you guys are going to either agree with or find extremely funny. Um, yeah, <laughs> go back. This is like, again, like I said, this is episode three, so you know, we're already three, three in deep. I can't believe it. I'm so proud of myself for the win, right? Now, I don't know how big this is going to get, but I do want to, uh, you know, be able to have, like I said, some conversations and, you know, just share my message with the world, my perspective. A lot of people always asking me what I think about certain things and I almost always have an opinion. So <laughs> let me just go ahead and you know, put it out here. And then a lot of people um, have um, on other platform, uh, platforms have always wanted to be able to have a space or a way to interact with me more so often. Now I can tell you a lot of those, um, half of those were guys, because a lot of times I'm just goofy and I'm telling jokes or whatever. And some of the groups that I maintain like on Facebook or whatever, but um, my girl talk is, I just have a lot of girl talk because, you know, I've even had a couple of guys say, hey, you don't have anything for the guys. It's just like, I don't know what I was saying to y'all. I'm sorry, but let's see y'all watching this. Um, I, I don't, I think you guys, I would run out of topics um, to talk to you guys because I'm, I'm not a guy, so I don't have uh, that same perspective, even though for the most part of my life, I was uh, a rough and tough time boy. So complete 180, complete. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started on um today's topics. Uh, today uh, is part of the love series and um, I was wanting to really kind of get the point across about how, well, firstly, understand that 
um, outside of the games, the guests we're gonna have over and like the different like warning signs, um, decoding what they say, um, when, when what they really mean, like we had an episode one and two, um, we'll be bringing uh, some more back of those uh, over time. But um, here we're gonna be really just delving into the love series. And this is really about how, because lately I've been finding myself and finding other people um, who's been having really questions about how come so-and-so person didn't leave when they were in a shitty relationship and they knew um, why didn't they just leave and they called them stupid and this and this and that. And I can tell you um, at one point, we were all thinking that same thing until you're in it. And um, really, the main thing is to understand that being in like love for yourself can. I have allergies. Oh my god! I keep uh, the fan on, and then it's off, and then it's on, and then it's off, and it's on because the Texas weather is crazy. I don't know uh, where all you guys are. Uh, put down in the comment box. Um, what city you guys are from. I'm in Houston, uh, Texas, and home where it's been three digits outside since summer started, and it has not clicked, even in the rain, all the way up until like nine o'clock at night. Yeah, so uh, it's been kind of getting me a little under the weather, literally. So um, anyway, with that being said, uh, on the love series, we're talking about how come people stay longer than they should. I'm going to tell you to my my um, experience with that, because I just had like a moment where I was thinking about that. Some topics came up when we were discussing. And basically, um, how do I say this? I was thinking back and I was like, what the hell was I doing? Because it's just like, you ever seen or thought about the person that you were, you know, with after you finally got it all out of your system. And you know, then you're just sitting there like, what were you doing? Just sitting there, just really trying to think. <laughs> then, you know, it comes funny after a while, but it's just like, you know, well, you can really see the progress where you were at at that time. And it's just like, ooh, sometimes it's just not pretty. And, you know, that is really, Studies have shown that being like love, first of all, you already know is a drug, but studies have shown that even being in toxic relationships, um, the reward center in your brain is activated um, when you are in those types of situations the same way um, or much the same way as if you had an actual hit of dopamine uh, or if you were actually, you know, drinking or something that causes a physical um, addiction, like if you were to smoke or you know, do drugs or, or uh, to drink. So, you know, therein goes that. And when you are, you know, away from that person and you're one, then you're literally, when you, you, you feel compelled to reach out, to do this, to do that, you are literally having like withdrawals. Like, you know, I'm not quite sure if the withdrawals are towards the person or towards the chemical imbalance that you guys share. And that's another thing. Um, we're going to touch more on that in another episode. They just gave me another idea for another episode uh, because something else, <laughs> that reminds me of another conversation that I was having, is knowing who to pull away. Because you notice some people seem to notice that they attract some of the same people and whatnot. And it's just like, we, especially women, are very psychic, very sensitive. There's a thing called psycho, uh, my, psychometrics. Um, and there's a couple of other uh, aspects to that. When basically, just like other animals or species or mammals can sense the elevation levels of like pheromones and, um, uh, you know, all the excitement, like dogs can sense fear, all of that stuff. We sense certain chemicals, certain levels of chemicals or balances in other people. And then depending on where you are, like it'll mix into that. So I'm going to say that if you get someone who, like the proverbial bad boy, uh, or you're around someone, who even if they seem sweet and innocent, and you get this feeling that you are pulled, you need to avoid that person. Because um, 
but that's like another karmic lesson that's just ready and waiting to happen. Um, we're going to talk more about that, but that's how, you know, like you need to be somebody who is, you know, safe. You don't get that feeling that you just pulled and you can't stay away from because that person, usually what that means on their end, they're missing something, depleting. And so they're pulling in, um, drawing in or trying to draw off of your, um, your uh balance levels uh, if that makes sense without just really going into that topic but let me go back into what i was um just saying about the reward center actually experiencing withdrawals away from that person or the situation which of those probably both um it hadn't really been uh clarified uh, which if it was the person or if it was the situation but um i myself has not come to this conclusion and found a research that actually supports what i was thinking because i typically like to do a lot of research on stuff like that um about psychology um pathology and why is this and why is that and that is due to my uh virgo moon so we want to know why the, the you got very anywhere in your big three you want to know why it's not enough for me just to feel these emotions i need to understand what they are if i don't like them then i need to make sure that i do whatever to stay away and if i do i need to find something that's going to pull those experiences closer to me to me it just makes sense and i'm more conscious of that and um yeah so um you are literally experiencing the same um withdrawals rewards uh rewards and uh, as a person who's a true heart junkie, <laughs> that's why they have the actual term like love addict, love junkie, people who are hopeless romantics, etc. And you know, you you really aren't aware of that unless you are like really just brought into mind and said like how you and I are talking about this now, and I'm going over. Uh, why this is and where this is coming from and just literally give you examples of how this is related to that now i'm gonna tell you um also that um there was a point that i was trying to make i just lost again <laughs> give me one second that would happen okay so um now I remember so as far as where all of this stemming from how you end up being in those types of situations is from, you know, a number of things. One of them could be inherited. One of the things that they don't like to teach you in school or in your science and biology class is about um, those empty space in between those cells um, that, that they love teaching you about um, is where the spirit and the spiritual lies in between those um, cells and so in, in your body. And it's just like, you can store trauma, you can store um, curses, like uh, generational curses, you can store um, uh, abilities, like uh, some people are, you know, ESP, they are ex they have uh, extra sensory perception, or intuitive or psychic, psychic literally just means that you are soulful or you're in tune, it's not woo woo, um, the people who are very logical minded and don't believe in the spirit uh, don't have any religious aspects or don't have any spiritual um uh mindset about them or spiritual feeling about them but they don't follow those beliefs they tend to only want like things that they can touch see and feel and so they totally negate and neglect the idea that um that could have anything related to it um, even though science in itself is a form of magic um so so is another thing uh, a lot of other things in your waking daily life that we'll actually talk about later on some point but um back to what i was saying though um in those spaces in your actual cells and dna you can store trauma you can store uh gifts um uh, like psychic or intuitive gifts um you can maybe have like the played pianos and have the keys going and other stuff like that um, they could be musical gifts, they could be spiritual, they could be teaching, they could be speaking, they could be writing, um, other things that are non-creative. And um, another way that you can fall into those situations and be prone is the familiarity 
or the lack of familiarity. Like some people, I'm going to start with the more innocent tone is that they, um, they didn't grow up with uh, toxic environments or at least as less as possible um, in certain aspects. They didn't have, they were sheltered. I'm going to say that they were, they were cradled. They were in their own little bubble and they're totally unawares. And so when someone, because they are thinking that they are kind, that they are wholesome, that they are fair, that they are just, that the whole world is like that because their whole world has been like that. And that's the farthest thing from the truth. Um, just because something isn't on your realm of existence or your sphere of thinking to do, um, especially in regards to causing harm to someone, does not mean that someone else, you know, um, could never do that or fathom doing that. The thing is, you you not knowing or even being aware of thinking where to think or exist um, that someone could do that is because you are not aware, you're not in that mind state, you're, you've never been exposed to that. Um, that's what we call green. Uh, and then that's where naivete comes from, being naive. And so um, you're unsuspecting. And then, um, Conversely, there is if you are familiar, because that's what they always tell you to really just be careful where you call home, because not everyone grew up at a happy childhood. And you have to really sit, I'm gonna let y'all sit and think about that. Um yeah, letting that sink in. Be careful what you call home. Because not, you know, what feels familiar, because not everyone grew up in a happy or healthy home. Um, with that being said, some people, you know, now we talked about the people who are, you, we started with the people who are always, you know, the actual victims of the situation perpetually and they are, you know, not easy or they're hard of getting out of that situation and typically find themselves in that situation. Let's talk about the people who are typically the perpetrators. Um, they, first of all, don't sometimes realize that they're even doing it. The other horrible thing outside of not realizing that they're doing it is that they don't know any other way. They think that that is normal because that's what they have been subjected to and they don't have and have never seen any positive um, alternatives to their behavior. Like say, for example, if you wanted to uh, test your partner to see how much they really mess with you, or if they're really down for you, if they're really loyal to you, you would go and just cause a bunch of havoc to see if they would leave. And then, you know, being surprised ultimately after so many times of you doing that, that they just get tired of being tested or tired of you doing things, they just leave all together. And then you're like, see, you're just like all the other ones. You left. And it's just like, you just subjected this individual to a whole lot of trauma just for a test, a game. And then also when you get some people who are sick, they actually get a kick out of stuff like that. Um, I don't know at what point it literally turns like that. I guess it happens, you know, that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother because to get in the mindset of something like that, um, I really, Hmm. that's a dark, that's kind of a dark place that I really don't want to be in that place right now. Because it's like, I like to get in the mind of people and try to understand and be objective. You know, that's that Libra rising. Me. I like to try to be objective. But it's just like, I can understand a lot of things and definitely not agree with it. And that's one of those things. Because I really kind of hate the excuse. It's, to me, I see now as an excuse. I first see it to be something that's like a little understood. But you know, at this point, in time at this day and age we're all um at this age you know you know and so people are like oh hurt people hurt people well i mean at some point in time everybody's been hurt but not everybody's going around doing these things you know and consciously and intentionally trying to or rather being careless enough to go around and or neglectful enough to go around and hurt people so I really think at this point that it's, it's, it's a cop out because no one should have to tell you, you know, 
not to do X, Y, Z, like, oh, if you're in a monogamous relationship, if you guys are into the poly lifestyle where y'all are all free to do, in, you know, whom and what as you please, when you please, then and you guys have a mutual understanding, whatever you guys' arrangements are in that aspect, we're not talking about you. We're talking about the people who lie, manipulate, and trap people into what they believe monogamous, to be monogamous on the one side when the one person is not being monogamous. In other words, they're cheating, okay? And the one person is unaware. So if they are aware at some point or since it, they haven't uh, got to a point where they are ready to, you know, be brave enough or, you know, for whatever convenient reason, um, financially or physically, that they're able to just leave that situation or end it. And, or that they understand that this person made a decision. Oh, it was a mistake. No, that was, no, it's not a mistake. It's a decision, especially the number of times that you do it. Because my grandma used to tell me, she said, if you tell somebody that they're hurting you and they keep doing it, they understood. Like, you know, because the first time if you don't say anything, then it's kind of like you're teaching them how to treat you, blah, blah, blah. And then you tell them something. And it's like, okay, maybe they don't understand how I mean, or, or they're not conscious, they're not aware of when they're doing this because they're probably just so used to being able to have so many freedoms. But once you go in and you explain to them and then you tell them how later and they continue to do it, then they've made that conscious decision. And then like, you know, that means also like, you probably upset because you realize they understood the first time. They just, they didn't care. They knew what they were doing. And so, you know, then that starts to breed a bit of resentment um, in, in you because you were doing right and this person was pretty much trying to play with you in your face. And, and you know, you, you got to decide how you act on that, um, on that point when, when something like that happens. Um, so, yeah, that it, it's, it's ultimately it's a decision. Uh, outside of that, it's just like, basically, they know, they are aware, and I have some neighbors, um, guests, that are playing music as they pass by. Hopefully, you guys don't hear um, the noise, but if you do, that's what the noise is. I'm right here by uh, my window in my dining room, so, um, and my house is facing, you know, it's, this window here is facing the, the, the street. So anyway, as I was saying, kind of, kind of threw me off. Um, they're aware, they don't care. And as long as you stay in there, you, they're, they're gonna keep doing it. Um, sometimes they'll stop very rarely, but after that point, it's just like, you can't really put it past them because it's like, you've already done it. The trust is usually already broken. And it's just like, you know, uh, you can't unsee it. And so sometimes they even start to get angry with you because you caught them. It's just like, that part just doesn't make any sense with me because how can you get angry at someone who caught you doing what you did? And then sometimes they'll know that they're doing wrong, get caught, and then they'll still lie to you. It's like, I'm looking dead at you. You literally are looking at me, looking at you, doing what you're doing. And then they lie about it. If you're gonna lie about something small, <laughs> ain't no telling how big or what else you're gonna lie about. And, you know, so you just gotta really be conscious of, you know, or just know, have, you know, set your standards as far as what you're going to do when this happens. And I can tell you, we as women, ladies are the worst as far as holding people accountable, not in the fact of saying that they don't call them out, because a lot of times women, will call people out for their bad behavior if they're in a relationship with them but if they say oh if this person does this then i will do this but when they're in that situation they don't like case in point for infidelity a woman most um part they for the most part will say oh i will leave you got a lot of women that you know especially after some time that this happened they'll leave but i kind of think it oftentimes it takes there to be building up to that point they don't just automatically men on the other hand conversely just like they can do everything on the world to you they can have you know two girlfriends six wives and you know 
to a little chicken heads if they're just sitting on the side. And the minute you even entertain or even flirt back with one, then they are, you know, just crying, boo-hoo in their little shell. And they're ready to leave you, leave it all. And it's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, where was all this strong, forgive me and look over what I didn't mean then? Like, a lot of these men, they don't, they don't have that. I think women need to more adapt um, to what they uh, are doing in that aspect. I also think they need to more adapt as far as um, not dating uh, potential and versus what the person is actually showing signs of now um, and not trying to build them up. I think the most um, group of women who have a problem with this is women of color, um, particularly, particularly Black women. And um, that's something that definitely we need to uh, get out of because I'm going to tell you men as a whole are not looking at the potential of a woman when they are deciding if I should invest with this woman now they're looking for the most part of how she is now the realistic more physical 3d um that she that she cook now that she clean now that she have and it depends on whatever their agenda is or whatever they're looking for that they are usually a lot better and sticking to their guns as far as their reason of going into a relationship, whether it's for friends, whether it's for, um, I think really the only person who benefits from from FWB's uh, type of situations is the men. Um, but, you know, I digress. Some women will sit and debate you on that. Hey, more power to you. Me personally, I think that they benefit, the men benefits more than a woman because it's just like, at the end of the day, what is, she, what is she getting out of that, you know? And he came in, he got what he wanted. I think that, you know, yeah, just no. I'm not even much going to touch that one right now. Um, that's a whole nother, um, that's a whole nother idea for another episode. Um, I want to write these down because these are good. These are good topics. So let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think so far about, um, uh, the topics and these different uh, points that I just really contributed today. Um, I think that they're pretty good. I want to say too that um, since we kind of understand where or why the situations come, I want you guys to talk about now, like how or where this is stored outside of, um, like we were going into the conversation about it being familiar or the lack of familiarity, but also where these experiences are stored. And that's in this thing called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is actually like a message center, if you will, a clearinghouse for the neural pathways. And so it basically triggers and holds responses. So it's kind of like muscle, where muscle memory is created from, but from like trauma triggers and experiences PTSD because it's just like something that it could be something as simple as when you were younger and you know it you wanted to go outside and it started to rain and it got dark in the middle of the day and then you your your frown I mean your smile when you were happy and then it goes down and you're gloomy why because now you can what go outside right okay then so you know you pretty much conditioned to think that every time that this happens and then it's happening uh another more adult way um where you know could it could have stemmed from a long time is um how you are in friendship or relationships and that's with abandonment issues um you some people would typically like to cling on okay and to the and have a, a anxious um of attachment style is what it's called and um you know they would cling off with your life because uh they feel so conscious that this person is going to you know leave for you know xyz reason maybe they think that they weren't good enough or if they didn't think that they were you know lovable or whatever their reasons were um or conversely they would um push you away you know avoiding type where it could be fear um, fear or, or dismissive attachment um, and push your way. Say, oh, this person, they're just going to leave anyway. Let me not get too attached. You know, we'll do all of that good stuff um, because of how they were experiencing um, relationships or people leaving in, in the past. So now all of that is stored 
in the the Mesa Center, which is the Vegas Nerf. Um, and so you really have to, um, I don't know what's the correct terminology for that, but you really just have to sit there and just, you know, desensitize yourself to those stimuli, the, the external stimuli, because it's almost always external. Um, so that you can retrain or reteach yourself. That's just like, okay, you had a bad experience learning how to swim when you were a kid. So now you're afraid of water and you don't want to go back. Well, at some point you might have to go back into the water. Um, like, let's say, for example, if you have your own kid, let's say you, you nearly drowned when you were like seven because you went into the backyard and hopped in the pool um, by yourself, even though your parents told you a million times to stay your ass from off the water by yourself um, until an adult or a lifeguard or somebody's with you and you did it anyway and you nearly drowned. And because of that, you um, have triggers of water fear it could even be some residual from like like uh i want to say so far as past life because some people are born to, to and have aversions to things that they really can't understand why and it's just because like that's something that happened like you know before because i feel like that as far as i used to feel like that with water but i love the water i'm a cancer son so it's just like that was kind of odd. I didn't like to be so much under the water, but I like to be in the water. And it was kind of strange. And I had to realize over time, I had to kind of desensitize myself and create and, you know, to take away not the, you know, to not just take away the bad experiences, but to replenish them and to replace them with good ones, with, with positive ones. And so that's pretty much what you have to do. Now I love being in water. I could sit and be in the water for like hours and hours and hours. And um, I don't panic as far as like me having to go learn how to swim and stuff like that. Um, having to swim or to, to get to the other side of the pool. So that's essentially what you have to do. And so these types of things essentially all lead into um, the topic for the day, which is how people end up and end up and stay stuck. Not only how they get into it, but how they stay stuck into um, toxic toxic relationships. Well, um, now that we come to the end of the episode, guys. Again, my name is Destiny Ray. Um, I thank you for uh, attending Girl Talk with Des. Um, I am going to have my cash app down in the. Um, comment section um if you guys want to support um to get better uh equipment or like you know just make the, the space nicer um we are going to be switching out the um you know the the background so that you guys don't get like a little fatigue and so all of these things kind of take you know like time and money so um and just if you like the message that i was putting out as well um you can make a donation to my cash app and just, you know, let's go again. And that way we, I can continue to come on making these, uh, these videos. I do want to know what you guys um, thought about some of the points that um, I talked about. And if you had any suggestions for new ones, I can come back um, and make uh, an episode talk about that. Once we get, again, like I said, some, um, some subscribers get like you know a little fan base get enough of you guys on here um i do want to have uh you know live chats where we are able to talk back and forth instead of me just talking you know to you guys one way at the screen like this i want to have some actual um you know two-way interaction some feedback to have a sense of community i don't have a QT name for us yet but y'all know those who know me know that i'm very good with coming up with names i just don't have one yet i'm thinking like dolls girl i don't know because the girls barbies i don't know they feel like two together and, and at this age like we are you know grown and sexy not necessarily cute yeah kind of a balance in between so we got to kind of think about something that's if you guys have any good suggestions sometimes the names will find you and so you know i'm i'm kind of open to that as well kind of open to that um but like i said uh make sure that you guys like share and subscribe um put a like it, even if you you know aren't able to uh support uh, financially, definitely support energetically by showing your girls some love, okay? Put a thumbs up, like like the video, and, and share it, okay? Um, give me some opinions, some comments, some feedback into um, the comment section. Let me know what you thought about the subject, and um, I will see you guys later. I want to end this right now.